And now we're moving into the front end related pieces of our project where again, we have this pattern that emerges over and over where the Hasura bits of a project actually are, they're very front loaded where you don't actually, uh, you know, you do a lot of that at the beginning, uh, the data model, getting the API set up, and then you move rather quickly over to uh, just the parts that you're connecting it to. So for the front ends, the mobile frameworks, whatever else it is you're wanting to build, that's where you're gonna spend the majority of your time. And it's just kind of interesting how that always works out over and over. And that's, that's true for this project as well. Uh, so we're starting to move into the, now we draw the rest of the owl <laughs> part of the project where there's gonna be more uh, code added in uh, not on camera or something for us to be able to walk through. But what I wanted to do is talk about some of the remaining steps here. So I've got a cup, I've got a little bit of code here, a little bit of styling already added. Um, so you can see where we left off, you know, we'd had just the header and we were li uh, listing over Peter, Paul and Mary. Uh, and, and so now what I've done is I have gone ahead and added a, uh, homepage here of, of sorts. So, Welcome to BIP, uh, the number one place for backyard pizza with your friends. And then saying if you're new here, uh, you probably need to sign up or log in, or you need to scan a party code to get going. That party code is nowhere in our code base yet. We'll discuss this in sort of a, uh, a feature add-on after we've done the majority of our groundwork. Uh, and then you've got things like the, uh, sort of like maybe a list of, of the friends. So you kind of see people who have been there and had pizza. <laughs> I don't know. This project is a little bit loosely uh, con uh, concepted. So uh, what we're going to do here is uh, go ahead now and navigate to one, a route that I have added, and that is this login route. And so you can see that we have login and we have sign up. And the reason why we're doing this is because you know this is you're creating content where you're making pizzas for yourself. You're ordering a pizza for yourself, um, and you don't want somebody else, you know, ordering. I don't know, like, what's a, what's a pizza you don't like? <laughs> so you don't want somebody ordering that on your behalf. Um, that would be uh, not nice. We're going to not do a very thorough auth implementation, and we are going to actually do our own. I would recommend using something like Auth0 or Clerk or Okta. I guess it's kind of similar to Auth0 these days. Um, there's a number of other ones out there as well. Uh, I would look at some of those. I think Hydra is another one out there. Um, I would use I would use a tool and not roll my own, but for the sake of understanding kind of how these pieces work and showing off more of the project, we're going to implement that. But that's like, so that's getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. In this video, what we want to do is actually introduce the concept of a global store to this project for us to be able to uh, essentially have plumbing that goes through the entire application. Yes, we could do this all with native uh, React context. We could write all of this ourselves. I'm gonna use a couple of tools that are just helpful uh, abstractions. I'm also not gonna use the biggest library out there. I'm gonna use a simple one, uh, Zustand or uh, Zustand, <laughs> depending on your pronunciation. Uh, we're gonna use that for wiring this up just because it's really lightweight and it allows us to break in and out of the React paradigms if and when needed. So what we're wanting to do is actually uh, hook up, just for now we wanna hook up uh, the ability to take functions we declare in our store, be able to pipe them through to our login uh, behavior here and our signup behavior, so that when we call login, we're gonna log in with our, um, with our credentials, and this actually should say login here, uh, and we'll do sign up, we'll do the same. So what we're gonna do is head back over to the code editor now, and from the code editor, what we're gonna do is introduce a new top level uh, directory here under our www folder and that is going to be our global store and so what we're going to do is say a new uh, folder here that i usually use just the paradigm called store and i even just call mine store.ts typically so obviously if you have a big project you're going to break this up into a lot of pieces for our purpose we're going to go ahead and do this rather lightweight so what we have here let's have a look we've got our top level uh, instances here we install our dependencies so we're going to do that now so we'll go ahead and yarn add uh, Zustand. And so we've just added the uh, Zustand dependencies and now we're ready to go. Okay, what do we, what we have going on here? I've got a exported enumeration here that I've got called auth and it's simply two string identifiers, auth and not auth. 
I have defined a local type. This is some TypeScript specific pieces here. This is not required for Sushdan, but I, I use it that way. Uh, we have the auth uh, state. We have the ID of the, uh, of the user. We have the token uh, from the user as well, their JWT, and we have the uh, username. So we have their, their state, we have their ID, their token, the username. And then we have uh, interface, which is going to actually be uh, the whole project here. Um, I actually am going to uh, rename this here to uh, BIP. And so on the interface of BIP, I have the user uh, state here, which is going to be local user. And then I have these three methods, uh, sign up, login, and log out. And those are going to be ones that we're going to define down here inside of our creating of the store. So we're creating by extending the interface here. And we're going to then say, okay, dev tools coming is going to give us the ability to kind of inspect our state uh, in the application. And then we have uh, the persist. And this persist method down here at the bottom, just you identify which key you want to store this in on local storage. Okay, we're not going into the details about the pros and cons of storing JWTs in local storage versus not doing that. It's generally not a good idea. This is a backyard pizza ordering platform. So that being said, we've got minimal risk here <laughs> uh, in terms of in terms of what would happen if we got hacked or somebody's account got compromised. Best practice would be to do sort of a uh, short-lived JWT, and then we have the ability to, to extend that with uh, like a refresh token and on and on. We have documentation on that, and uh, we'll put that in the, the links. So what we have here is on our store, we've got the, uh, this is where sort of the, the guts begin. And we've got our uh, user. So it's just saying this is the user, and it's currently the only thing that it has is a partial state of auth and it is not auth so we just have an unauthenticated uh, state for a user and then we have this sign up method and logout method uh, and the login method here as well let's, in, let's reverse these orders here i think that's actually a bit more uh, helpful so we have sign up login logout okay so we got this these states here and we can see we've identified on our uh, interface that login will take a username and password as required uh, inputs as well as for sign up and then for identifying what these actual functions look like, we obviously have to carry that uh, forward. We have to say, yes, you need a username and password, username and password. So what we're gonna do now is go to a location where we're actually implementing this, which is actually our auth um, component. And this component, it's not the cleanest React, but basically I've got a couple of helper functions here to let me know um, what's the current status of this uh, user. Uh, so I can say, are they trying to do a login? Are they trying to do a sign up? And then we're able to just have two locally defined uh, components, sign up and uh, login, which then uh, come down here into sort of a switch kind of uh, component here that essentially just says, uh, show me the, uh, the toggles here. And then depending on what I'm trying to do, my intent, do a login or a sign up. We see that right here. We see the we see the login, we see the sign up. So obviously this just changes. We can quickly go in there and fix my typo. On the login, we will set this uh, button here, this input to uh, say, um, this should be login. Head back over. And now we have on login, we should log in. On sign up, we should sign up. Great. All right, so what we're gonna do now is actually import our store here so we can essentially say that this handler here, which at the moment all it does is a console logs out the behavior, uh, we want to actually use our store method. And the reason why we're doing this is because we would like to sort of put all of our logic for API interactions in one location that's a lot easier for us to work with. So I'm gonna go ahead and now import that store. And what it's gonna be in this case is it's a, a utility called useStore which is a named export from the store we created, not from the library itself or from the, from the, the store we created. And so what this is gonna allow me to do is actually go ahead and pick and pull different pieces off that I need. And so what we're gonna do with that is it's gonna give us access to these helpers. Now obviously the hook naming is a little bit um, different, but we can uh, simply pick those off here inside of our, uh, our, our uh, component, okay. So for sign up, we want to go ahead and pull off the sign up method um, from the uh, use store object. And for login, we're going to do the same. Okay. 
And now what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna go ahead and test the login method here first. So we're just gonna switch out this console log to login and we're gonna see that there, there should be nothing that happens because it should be an empty function right now. And we're gonna do the same thing up here for sign up. So we're gonna pass in this behavior as well, swapping out our console log with that. So we're passing in these parameters and you'll remember from our stores here, we've got uh, username and password and we have the login as well. So here, nothing should happen. When I come over to here, let's go ahead and put in our inspect mode. And uh, when we have inspect here, we're gonna be able to see, let's go ahead and dock this to the side. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, actually open this up just a little bit wider, which we uh, fortunately have a bit more of a mobile optimized interface, so that's great. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and say for login, we're gonna say that the name is uh, demo, password is user. We'll go ahead and hit login and we should see that uh, nothing happens here. And we can also see that we've got a form submit, which I failed to catch the, um, the event uh, to prevent the default. Let's go ahead and stop that uh, refresh real quick. Okay, so we have our uh, behaviors that are uh, now a little bit protected and we're gonna go ahead and uh, test these out. So we're gonna run this again and uh, hopefully we don't actually get that uh, refresh. So we're gonna go ahead and say uh, user, demo and there's no actual account here so we can see if we can uh, run that all day and nothing will happen so now what we want to do is go back to our uh, store here and on login we're going to go ahead and uh, run the actual code inside of the login handler here so we're going to say that it returns nothing but we want to do is say a uh, console dot log logging in user and then we'll put in username here. So we can just see that we should be able to get that for logging in. And we'll just go ahead and copy this to our sign up as well. And we'll say signing up. And this will allow us to sort of verify if this is working. So we go ahead and hit uh, log in now. And we can see we get our console log and we go to sign up and we go ahead and uh, get the same. And we can see that uh, our methods here are working just fine. So we've now created a local store where we'll be able to sort of identify uh, the methods that we wanna pass into the rest of the application. We can import them into components as many levels deep as we want. And that will allow us to uh, be able to work without any kind of provider. This is part of what makes this one a kind of a cool library is that there's no provider, nothing else. We're able to simply just define this store in one place and be able to uh, route that down through the rest. And this little bit of plumbing here is gonna help us be able to handle some more uh, complex logic, uh, sort of some cascading events, uh, some side effects, and uh, we'll see that in the next video as we actually implement the login methods. But first we have to actually define a login action and a sign up action and create all of that behavior for the API, which will take us back to Hasura land and then we'll come back over and be able to implement those uh, through our front end. So for that, we'll see you in the next video.